It is 5.07 on the Central Coast. Welcome back to News Talk 920 KVC. I'm Dave Congleton telling you, you something you already know. It's crazy out there on the highways and the byways. Just keep it tuned right here to Hometown Radio. Joe and I are here all the way till 7 o'clock. We will interrupt this program as needed with regular traffic updates. But as Joe's been saying, whether you're going north or south, it's crazy. It's Tuesday, November 26, 2013, by the way. Still to come on this broadcast during the 6 o'clock hour. Joe joins me in studio. I suspect we'll be talking a lot about traffic, but it's last call. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. First, though, here's our cruise guy. Jim Zim is on this broadcast. Jim, nice to see you. Hi, Dave. Good to see you again. Although we got to stop the segment. You're going to have to ask you to leave because yeah. I, I thought we were going to talk about real cruises. <laughs> but you just want to talk about cruising on Carnival. That's not what I want to talk about. And Norwegian. Those aren't real cruise lines. <laughs> <laughs> why Why don't you think Carnival, the world leader in cruising, the most popular cruise line in the world, is real cruising? Because that's the one that has all the trouble, doesn't it? You know, that's kind of interesting that you said yeah, that, yeah. because they've got yeah. all the press for the trouble. <laughs> but did you know, just like a couple weeks ago, the Dawn Princess had a fire in an electrical room, and all the passengers got called out to their muster stations with their life jackets on to stand by to evacuate if necessary. I went on a Princess cruise. I had a great time. I yeah. go on. I go on a Princess tomorrow. I'm just saying that other companies yeah. besides Carnival, uh, you know, have had incidents, but Carnival gets all the attention. The Princess right. incident got zero and, attention. And you don't take any compensation from Carnival. You're not a paid flight no. for Carnival. No, not at and all. And you have been on one with Norwegian. <laughs> And you thought Norwegian was worse than Carnival. We did a, a couple of Carnival cruises, you know, when we first started cruising. And I thought, hey, it's not the only cruise line in the world. Let's yeah. try some of the others. Yeah. And we did a Norwegian cruise out of L.A. that was very similar to the Carnival cruises out of L.A. that we had done. And it was just simply inferior. Hmm. And we have never gone back. All right. So what made you start your first cruise? How did you get into this, Jim? I think I got lured uh, by a very low price. I, I remember it was like one ninety nine a person, yeah. you know, for my first cruise, and I didn't have a lot of money. And I thought, hey, even I can swing that. Yeah. So we got started, and then after the first one, and uh, what did we... you think of that first one? It was fun. We yeah. had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but the kids were a little bit bored. They were kind of at the wrong age for cruising, yeah, right. and they didn't want to go to the kids' club. So for all the rest of the cruises, we just left them at home. Mm. And we went on our own, and we had a great time. And where do some of the do you go on the same cruise each year? Have you gone to different cruises? Yeah. Well, sense. when we started, the first few cruises we did it kind of on the cheap, and so we would drive to L.A. or to San Diego, and cruise from there because that's right. the cheapest way to go. Right. Because you pay a, a parking fee for your car, but you don't have to pay the exorbitant airfare. Right. And then after we had done maybe six or eight of those you know, Mexican Riviera cruises, and we said, eh, okay, it's time to do something new, and we had some money, so, you know, we flew to Miami, and we took a cruise out of Miami, and holy cow, that's like the <laughs> difference between going on a date with a normal girl and going on a date with a, you know, Victoria's Secret model, okay. right? I mean, it was hugely better to be in the Caribbean. Was it Was it the ship itself, or was it just the ports of call? Well, it was mainly that the water is so much warmer. Oh, yeah. The beaches yep. are so much better. Yep. But also, that's where all the great ships are, and that's where they put their best staff. And so That's like the prime areas, the Caribbean. That's it. That's their bread and butter right there. Hmm. And especially for Carnival, going out of Miami, I mean, it's just the best experience in the world. But aren't you, on a Carnival ship, aren't you just with a bunch of families and drunken college <laughs> students and the low life? <laughs> All right. If you cruise at spring break, yeah. okay, especially if you do like a three-day or a yeah. four-day cruise on spring break, I mean, it's all crazy college students. Yeah. But when you do the longer cruises, like a seven-day cruise, you're getting less and less of it. Mm -hmm. And also when you get, you know, at, at times of the year when school's in, then it's very few, you know, students at all and very few kids at all, even on Carnival. Mm. And But why haven't you gone like on Princess or Royal Caribbean? Why haven't you tried those? Yeah, well, I'm going on a Princess cruise next summer. All right. We're going to do an Alaska cruise. All right. Oh, you'll love that. Yeah. And actually, when I heard you talking about going on the Golden Princess out of L.A., yeah. 
it got me, it piqued my interest, and I started to look into some of the L.A. cruises that Princess has. And I see that actually, in in some ways, they have some things going for them out of L.A. that Carnival doesn't have. Such as? Uh, they have a, a, uh, some nicer places that they go. Carnival pretty much, it's Cabo San Lucas, Puerto Vallarta, and Sonata. Yeah. Uh, there are a few other options with Princess, uh, and there's a lot of variety. I mean, Carnival pretty much you have your choice in on the L.A. cruises, of a three-day that goes to Ensenada, yeah. a four-day that goes to Ensenada and Catalina, yeah. or you can do a seven-day that goes down to Cabo and Puerto Vallarta. And and that's it. And they just do those over and over all year long. Princess mixes it up a little more. Yeah. So, but And they also have some California coastal where you could – I mean, this is a little weird for us in San Luis Obispo, but the cruise stops in Santa Barbara. And it stops in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, and that could be fun for some people. So they mix it up. There's a cruise – on uh, Princess that <sighs> you leave L.A., you go all the way up to San Francisco. Yeah. Then you come back down to Santa Barbara, San Diego, and Sonata. And then you come back to L.A. I don't know if that would be great for San Luis Obispo people because, you know, we've all been to San Francisco. and But it's just the cruise itself. It is. That's... I'm not one of those guys. I've, I've done four cruises. I don't care so much about the, 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 the stopovers. I would just want to have fun on the ship. I just so, want to get away. Yeah. So tell me what you really liked about the whole cruising thing. What is it for you? What I like about cruising is that for four to ten days, I can get away from the world, and no one is going to be calling my wife. No one is going to be calling me. On Princess, if you want to check your email, it's 79 cents a minute. So you're only going to go on if it's really <laughs> important. You just shut out the world. That, to me, is the number one thing. Yeah. You meet interesting people, and you get waited on 24-7, particularly on a princess cruise. They really emphasize service, and they're just great with service. And I like being waited on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for middle-class guys like me and you, it yeah. is great to be taken care of in that way. And also the entertainment. I mean, when was the last time... In San Luis Obispo, you went to a comedy club and saw a comedian. When I was on this uh, cruise to Ensenada, there were two different com- uh, comedy groups, and they were fantastic. Yeah, and if you go on a seven-day cruise, it would be four different comedians. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what I like about it. Is I don't go, you know, out when I'm in San Luis Obispo. I don't go to shows, uh, you know, other than movies. I don't go see plays or comedians. So you've done 19 cruises with Carnival, if my math is right? Yeah. So are they giving you, is there like a club? Do they give you discounts because you're such a loyal customer? Uh, The only, there's a couple of little perks. Uh, I get priority boarding so that when I arrive at the port, I'm in the first group that gets on. So I kind of beat the crowd to lunch the first day. Uh, they will do laundry for me if I want them to, although I've kind of found that I don't like other people doing my laundry. Yeah. And even though I can get free laundry, we just go to the little laundryette and do it ourselves. Uh, and there's just a few little minor perks like that. That's all they're giving you after 19 cruises. I think Jim. they give you some <laughs> chocolate-covered strawberries or well, something. For, for example, on Princess, I did one little cheapo cruise to Ensenada. Yeah. I spent $400 plus tax. They've already told me if I take another cruise in 2014, they will give me $400 in credit. I mean, you see. Yeah, the prices are really, really <laughs> low, and, you know, they're hungry for I would some think business. after 19 cruises, they would give you a free cruise somewhere. They, not a free cruise. Uh, they do also, the one thing I forgot is that they have a party, especially for their past guests, and yeah. there's free booze at the party. So there's kind of a nice party. In the middle of the cruise. What was so wrong with Nor- uh, Norwegian? It, w- it wasn't that it was horribly wrong, but that it was just inferior. I'll give you just yeah, an example. Please. Okay, on Carnival, you order a hamburger. The bun has been grilled. The burger is, you know, hot right off of the, the grill. The fries are, you know, right out of the fryer. It's a good burger and fries experience. All right. We went on Norwegian. And they had a tray, like a warming tray, full of burger patties, a tray full of unheated buns, and, you know, a tray full of fries that were made who knows how long ago. And you put them together on your your thing, and you've basically got, you know, a kind of a coldish hamburger. It was just, it was inferior. And there was 20 different things that were like that, where, you know, both had hamburgers, 
But the one on Carnival was a heck of a lot better mm-hmm. and little things like that. And out of all the 20 cruises we have been on, the only time that we ever had a problem with like our room key wouldn't work was on Norwegian. Wow. It never happened to us on Carnival. Jim Zim on this broadcast, key question on, on, uh, on uh, Carnival, how do they handle tipping? How do they handle the gratuities? I imagine it's probably the same way on Princess, because you know that the Carnival Corporation owns Princess, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, on Carnival, it's um, you are charged a certain amount per day. I, I right. should have looked it up. What is it? It's like twenty twenty dollars a day or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically the wages of the you know the cabin steward and the people who served you your food. They get next to nothing from Carnival themselves. You're paying it out of your mandatory gratuity. But it used to be you'd have to leave the little folders with the cash yeah. in. Oh it. yeah, now but now all that's gone. No, it's they on just, your they, prepaid they just account. Add it on yeah. and boom, it goes from there. It's automatically on your account, and then you can dispute it if you got really bad service. You can go and have them take that charge off if you want. Uh, we're talking about cruising with Jim Zim. We'll come back and pick up the conversation and also check in with traffic. This is News Talk 920 KVEC. Please, please, please drive carefully. If you've got any traffic news to share with Joe, call him directly at 543-8830. California headline news at the bottom of the hour. Then we'll start welcoming your phone calls for Jim Zim, the cruise guy. He's been on 20 cruises, most of them with Carnival. So the big question, Jim... I'm thinking my friend Mark, who listens to the show, he's always wanted to take, he always wanted to uh, take a cruise. How do you take that first cruise? What do you look for? Well, if you live in this area, the first cruise should be out of L.A. Right. Uh, because then you can just drive to it. It's going to be cheap, and you can also do a short one out of L.A. Right. You can do a three or four or five day cruise out of L.A. So that's what you want to start with, and just see if it's for you. If you know you run into any problems, and I think most that people Ensen- love it. That Ensenada cruise is a rite of passage. Yeah, everyone does Ensenada sooner or later. Yeah, and you don't necessarily have to get off the ship in Ensenada because no. there's not a whole lot in Ensenada, no. you know, to see. So a lot the of the biggest people just Mexican stay on board. flag I've ever seen. It is a big one. Huh? That's huge. But I like that cruise because it gives you a sense as to whether or not you might enjoy the experience. Why spend all that money on a 10 day cruise and like, oh, I'm not liking this at all. Get me off of here. Yeah. Take the little cruise. Yeah. And then if that works out good and you enjoyed that, then the next step from there is to do one of the ones down to Cabo San Lucas and Puerto Vallarta, which could be a, a five or a six or a seven day cruise, depending on how you want to do it out of LA again. Right. And then. Once you've done those, if you have determined then that, hey, you are a cruise person, you love this, then the next step is to graduate up to the Caribbean. And and then you start looking at, you know, where you can fly to cheaply from around here. So uh, what are some of the places you've discovered? Where do you fly to? Well, uh, Houston or Galveston, you know, is is pretty close from here. Uh, You can take United Airlines out of Santa Maria and have free parking or out of San Luis. Uh, It's also pretty easy to get to New Orleans. You can go United Airlines to New Orleans. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Miami, uh, you could just drive down to LAX and get long-term LA parking, and you could do a non-stop to Miami on American Airlines, or you could do a non-stop to Fort Lauderdale on Southwest, and, you know, it's not real expensive. It's like 800 bucks for two people. Ah, but the good deal is, is to find a cruise ship that will throw an airfare. <laughs> well, that's not unheard of. Yeah, I think you're... I don't know. If I would imagine it would be the higher-end cruises. If you go on the longer cruises, yeah. they'll throw in some airfare. Yeah. Now, the thing is, though, is that then you have Cardinal's to... Cardinal's not going to do that. Well, and you have to leave the details up to them, and sometimes you can get some really funky flight arrangements. Do you do everything yourself, oh, or do you yeah. work with a travel rep from Carnival? Do you use a travel agent, no, Jim? I, I do it all myself, because there's so many different ways to go, and so many little details, and I want to take care of it all myself. you negotiate at all? Or you just look for the best deals and, there's, and there's take nothing those. to negotiate. It's not like so. I mean, if car. you call Carnival and say, "Hey, I'm looking at that cruise, but I don't know, can we make a deal here?" No, there's no deal do making. It? No, there's there's no deals to make. So you can do it all on the internet. It's really easy. So what's the appeal of all this cruising for you? Why do you do it so much? Well, I I, I love the food. Yeah. Uh, primarily for me, it's really the beaches, the warm water. I grew up in you know California, and it's 50 degree water, right? Uh, so to go to a place where the water is 80 degrees? Are you kidding me? That's fantastic. And, you know, there's beautiful Caribbean beaches and stuff. Do you look, do the uh, stops, are they a factor for you? 
For me, yeah. I like, okay. I prefer the cruises that have more stops. So on a seven day cruise, I hope to find one that will stop at least four different places. Oh, that, cause that is something you have to look for because a lot of them, are, there are days at seas. Yeah. And typically seven some people day, like that. Yeah. Some people like more. It just depends. Whatever you like it, you know, and there's so many different ways to go. There's so many variations on the cruises that whatever you like, you can kind of find something. So with this Alaska thing, is that already booked? Yeah, I've booked the Alaska cruise. It's going to be really fun because it's going to be with my all my siblings. So there's going to be a bunch of us right. all together in the joining cabins. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Wow. And is, is this like a seven-day cruise? It, well, it's actually a cruise tour. Do you know about Princess Cruise Tours? Uh, remind me. Uh, that's where you... Take the cruise ship up one way only. It doesn't come right. back to right. where you started. Right. And then you get off and you get on a um, oh, you're gonna train. Do, you're going to go to Denali? Yeah, Denali. Okay. And we're going to do like five days on land on the in the Princess Hotels after that. So it's total almost two weeks. It's going to be great. All right. Two weeks with your siblings. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think that will be a problem. Wow. And then our next cruise that's coming up is on a ship that Carnival recently spent $155 million to refurbish. It's kind of like when you watch those shows on TV where they, you know, re, uh, redo a home, where they flip a home, yeah. and they take some old dog of a home, and they turn it into just, you know, a showpiece. Carnival did that with one of their kind of older ships, uh, and they sunk $155 million into it, which is unheard of, and turned it into the latest, greatest state-of-the-art. So that's going to be your 20th cruise on... Carnival. carnival, yeah. They should give you something for that. <laughs> the with carnival, uh, it actually happens at when you've sailed for two hundred days. Okay. Then they give you a little extra something. Jim Zim, the cruise guy, is here. We'll be back with more of your, uh, more of our conversations and your phone calls. More traffic on News Talk nine twenty KVEC. Glad to have you with us on Hometown Radio. I'm Dave Congleton. My guest for the hour is Jim Zim. He's had 20 cruises. I'm a lucky guy. Although they're on Carnival, so it's really like 10 real cruises. <laughs> Giving him grief. <laughs> We're talking about cruising. We welcome your phone calls, 543-8830, 1-800-549-5832. Ruth is in Paso on KVEC. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Hi. I was just calling in. I've been on eight cruises, and okay. um, I actually love Norwegian for a number oh. of reasons. Um, I found it had the best entertainment and the best food, so I didn't have the same experience that your guest did. It's and, amazing uh, to me how everybody like, has different experiences on different cruise lines. Right, well, And right. to be fair, the, the I, bad experience I that I had. I think great, and, and uh, we just got back from a 13-night cruise a week ago we were on Celebrity. Oh, how was that? And, um, I I love so I, I, before this trip I would have said Celebrity and Princess were my top two. Right. And this one, you know, you feel very pampered, and that's the big thing about it. But there wasn't much to the food wasn't that great this time. The, pre, the previous time it was, so you know maybe it's not even just the cruise line, but the individual one. So, but typically Celebrity's been really good, and um, you know we love the uh, cruising over in the Mediterranean area. What do you love about cruising so much, Ruth? What's the appeal for you? Um, I like the ports, so I always pick it based on the ports. And um, uh, at sea days, I'm not as big on, you know. So we've done, you know, the Canada, New England, Alaska. I've never done any Caribbean or Mexico other than the Ensenada, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I just love, you know, I love being able to, to relax and get weighted on and, and uh, the entertainment at night. Yeah. Any advice you give somebody about going on their first cruise? Um, I did a three night to start with just to see if I got seasick. Yeah. And I did the repositioning cruise from San Francisco up to Victoria and Vancouver and I thought that was a great first cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Great suggestions, Ruth. Thank you. Explain repositioning to our listeners, Jim. Well, the ships are moving around a lot. Uh, they're, especially here on the West Coast, they're taking ships to Alaska for the summer. And so, you know, in the months leading up to the summer, the ships are moving up there. And so you could take a, a, a cruise up north like she did, where the ship is moving north, or at the end of the summer, take the ship southbound. And there's Panama Canal cruises where they're repositioning it from the west coast to over to the Caribbean for the winter. Uh, you know, we also haven't mentioned that there's cruises out of San Francisco, too. Yeah. Uh, so you could even do an Alaska cruise that starts and ends in San Francisco. And you could do you can do San Francisco and go south, too. And you can go to Hawaii out of San Francisco or out of L.A.? 
The uh, 543-88-30, 1-800-549-5832. Oh, I'm thinking, uh, for example, in May 2015, Princess has a repositioning cruise from L.A. to Vancouver. So no ports, no stops, three nights, two ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, there's opportunities there. And the Caribbean cruises are extremely affordable, too, because there's so much competition between the various cruise lines there. Somebody called in during the break wants to know why you don't take the shuttle down to LAX. Uh, I like to get there a little earlier than the shuttle gets there. And I also just like to have... Total control, and I have to wait for anybody. As soon as I get off the ship, I'm in my car, and boom, you know, I can go home right then. So, so you're one of those guys. Just, yeah. But there is that option for people. There's That's a shuttle sure. out of the Santa Maria Airport that will take you right down to the cruise ships. Yeah, for if sure. If you don't want to deal with all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another way to go from this area. Have you ever had a bad experience on a cruise? Not a bad cruise, no. All of my cruises have been wonderful. And the reason I've stuck with Carnival is just that they've been consistently good. You know, they never let me down, and everyone, you know, was as good as the others. And Carnival seems to be consistently the most affordable. Yeah, they are lower price. If you look at any cruise... You know, comparable cruise between Carnival and anybody else. Carnival is going to be cheaper for a comparable cabin, you know, on a comparable cruise. And sometimes, depending on what kind of cabin you're looking at, it could be a lot cheaper. I, lately, my wife and I have gotten into the uh, aft wrap balcony cruises, where you're at the back of the ship and you're in a, a balcony cabin where the balcony is huge, wrapping all the way around from the back of the ship to the side of the ship. Yeah. And on Carnival, they're extremely inexpensive compared to the other lines. An after app balcony on a Princess Cruise is typically about, for two people, it's about $5,000 for the week. And on Carnival, that's a $3,000 cabin. So it's a big difference when you're looking at cabins like that. Now, of course, if you're care- comparing inside cabins or ocean view cabins, there's not as big of a price difference, but Carnival is usually the lower one. Yeah, but see, I'm an inside cabin guy. Yeah. I'm here, I'm there to save money. I'm traveling on the cheap. So like the Ensenada thing was 199 for an inside cabin. Yeah. If I want to look out the window, I can go up on the main deck. I'm not going to spend an extra $100 a person for a little porthole. That's why it, cruising is so great because there's room for all sorts of different styles. And, you know, if you like stopping at a lot of ports, there's port intensive cruises. If you like those sea days, there's, you know, cruises where they are at sea more. If you like an inside cabin, those are available. If you want the top of the line cabin, you know, you can get that too. And everything in between. The other thing that I've enjoyed about cruising over the years is that I've met some interesting people. <laughs> I love the people watching. Yeah. <laughs> But you just meet people. You'll be in line. A lot of the cruise ships, if you're just traveling uh, with your spouse, uh, they don't want to just seat you two at a table. And they'll go, well, you're going to have to wait. Well, then you turn to the couple behind you, hey, you want to have lunch with us? Yeah, fine. And so you sit there and you have lunch together and you meet some really interesting people. We had a funny experience when we transitioned to our first Caribbean cruise after all of our First few cruises were here on the West Coast. It was all, you know, California passengers. And then we did the very first one where we went out of uh, Galveston, Texas. Yeah. And it was a different kind of passenger cruising out of Galveston. And we had a funny incident. We were in an elevator, my wife and I, and a whole bunch of friendly Texans were in the elevator with us. And they were so darn friendly, it was You know, you couldn't not notice it. And when they all got out and it was just me and my wife, she turned to me and she said, you know, if I had grown up in Texas, I might have learned to like people more. (laughs) Did they find out you were from California? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think, you know, we don't have that twang, so they could probably tell just from hearing me talk. Well, as long as as they didn't know you were from California, they're probably going to be nice to you. Uh, They were were nice. And as we mentioned earlier, you don't use the websites like Vacations to Go. Because there, there, there are websites like Vacation to Go, Travel Zoo, that claim to offer deals, Jim. Vacations to Go specializes in the last-minute cruises, and it, that doesn't work for me because I have to pre-schedule my vacation time at work and everything. So all my cruises have to be elaborately planned out way in advance. So that doesn't work for me. But if you're looking for a last-minute bargain, there are deals available. That's, a, that's we, an option. We met a woman on the Princess Cruise who was saying that Princess has a policy that if you contact them at the last minute, they will really give you a bargain uh, price because they'd rather have somebody in the room on the ship for 150 bucks. 
because they're going to get you on the drinks. That's right. They're going to get you in the casino. Yeah. And they don't want an empty room. And shore excursions. So if and you're all willing to stuff. wait till the last minute, you can get some good deals. But you also get stuck with the cabins that nobody else wanted yeah. when you do that. So there's a trade off there. Uh, so, you know, I like to really pick my cabin carefully. I don't want to be above the disco or underneath the, you know, dining room and listen to dishes clatter all night long. So I'm looking for a very carefully selected cabin. We had friends who uh, did the Ensenada cruise. I forget which cruise line, but they were uh, put next to the anchor. Yeah, and you hear that thing when it drops, and it drops early in the morning because you arrive into port at, you know, 5 or 6 in the morning, and you hear that anchor go, yeah. Uh, so they had to uh, ask for a different room, and they were given a different room. So the ship wasn't full on that particular cruise, although on a lot of cruises, you know, the ship is full, and there's you can't change rooms. On this Princess cruise, they were not full. Yeah, it just depends. And that surprised me. With that price, 199 they still were not full. The price tells you right there they're having trouble filling the ship. That should have been your indicator. <laughs> yeah. I didn't care. I was there. Yeah. Jim Zim with us on this broadcast. We'll come back for a final segment. This is News Talk 920 KVEC. All right, Joe. Thank you. Good job today. Joe and I are here until 7 o'clock. Jim Zim may be sticking around, too. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> We're talking about cruising. If you want to end the conversation, we need to hear from you now, please. 543-8830-1-800-549-5832. Jim has been on uh, 20 cruises. He's got some more planned. He's hooked. Now, Stephen Lososos emailed this to me. He and his wife did a Princess cruise. He just got an email offer from Princess. Uh, if you book by December 31st, you can get a three-day cruise for as low as 199 yeah. That's the deal I got. And receive a 199 future cruise credit. Or book a four day cruise from only 269 and receive a 269 future cruise credit. It's that easy. So you spend money now, you get a credit for a future cruise. And when we say 199 or 269, we're talking about per person. Yeah. And before port taxes and all that kind of stuff. Robin's in the Pomo on KVEC. Hey, Robin. Hi, Dave. Great Hi, Robin. topic. Thank you to your guest. Sure. I just had a quick question. I've only been on one cruise. It was a very short one out of uh, L.A. to Ensenada. Yeah. But I, but I was, I was had motion sickness. Is there any oh. tips or tricks? <laughs> there are pills that you can take, and there's a patch you can wear behind your ear on your yeah. skin. It looks like a little band aid. You see a lot of people wearing those on cruise ships, and they seem to okay. be really effective. And, and it's also where you get your room. Oh, yeah. so we had an inside room, so I was wondering if the outside rooms are better. Um, it's not so much inside versus outside, but the, the lower you are, the less motion there'll be. Yeah. And also, uh, you want to be in the middle if you're sensitive to the motion. If you get towards the front or at the back, you're going to have more motion. All right, great. Thanks. Great tip. All right, Robin, thank you. Susan's in Grover on KVEC. Hey, Susan. Hey, Dave. Hey, How are Susan. you doing? Good, thank you. One of my favorite subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. We just came back from, well, I guess we've been home a month now, from the Royal Princess making its transatlantic over to Fort Lauderdale from Venice. Nice. Oh, how many How many days? Well, we did, that part of it was 18. Before that, it was 12, so we were gone a month. <laughs> oh. Thanks for the postcard, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was it was interesting, but Princess is our cruise line of choice. I mean, we yeah. we've owned stock in Carnival for years. When they were bidding between Royal Caribbean and Princess, we were excited that that uh, it didn't matter who it went to because we already owned the Carnival stock. Oh. But, <laughs> but uh, they, their rewards program for your for your friend is definitely the best because you have free laundry, you have a mini bar with the booze and that kind of silly stuff. You have your all your internet minutes and. So they are good that way. Well, I enjoyed my Princess Cruise. I'd love to go on another one. Once I get once I get my raise, we're we're there. There you go, there you go. But hey, listen, with this deal, my my David just said, oh my gosh, he's telling everybody we were try to book one of those four days just to have it credited to another cruise later. So yeah, they're they're a great way to go, and it is lots of fun. Um, whatever cruising, hey, it's still better than a day at work, right? I agree. Thank now, you, Susan. Thanksgiving. Dave, on all these cruises that you've been on, I've been on four. Four? That's a lot. Mm. Have you had any great shore excursions where you've really seen something interesting or done something interesting on land? Yeah, Alaska. Yeah, because that's half the fun. And Antarctica. 
Pauline's in Morro Bay on KBC. Hey, Pauline. Hi. Hi. Uh, she, she was asking about how not to get sick. Yeah. The the Chinese uh, have let this out. It's uh, ginger. And what do you do with the ginger? You can get it at, at most of the stores. I get mine at uh, Trader Joe's. You can get it. Candy ginger in pieces. Yeah. You just eat. You just eat a lot of ginger before you go. Really. It's for morning sickness, motion sickness. You know, it's just now. It really, uh, it really works. I've tried it. I had to use it once, and I've only been on three cruises, and I love the one to Alaska. Oh yeah, that was. I can't. I think it was the Norwegian, but I really enjoyed, it and I want to go again. Well, the, the cheap way, Pauline. Thanks for the call. You can take the state ferry out of Seattle. You can put your car on it. You can camp on the ferry, huh. and it goes to all the places. If you just want to see Alaska and not have a cruise, just go on the ferry. Jan, you're not going to call in, are you? Jan's not going to call in, my queen my queen cruiser. She's not going to call in because you're talking about Carnival. I know already. You're giving me a lot of grief about Carnival. And I think part of it's because, you know, they had the incidents. It's the bargain basement. And also because they had the breakdowns at sea. I don't know whether you knew, but Carnival Corporation is spending $700 million across their entire 100 ship fleet, and that includes Princess and everybody, to put uh, more extensive backup generators on board so that they'll never have another one of those incidents where the toilets don't work. Susan's in Atascadero on KVEC. Hi, Susan. Hello, guys. Hi. I'm stuck in traffic, but I'm thinking I'm on a cruise ship, so it's great. Thank you. I wanted to ask if you've, uh, we went on Azamara, and I wanted to see if you had any experience with them, because it's, we loved it, and it's, uh, there's only like 500 people and no children, so. Who, who is this now? Azamara. A-Z-A-M-A-R-A, I think it is, and it's, I think it's a Royal Caribbean. Oh. There's two ships, and they're out of Malta. Really? Yeah. And you you sit you sit at the pool and you don't hear screaming and you know you're not getting water on your face and because <laughs> they don't have uh, they don't have childcare so uh, people don't bring children tend to bring children I guess yeah so I guess they're geared kind of towards the European market huh well we yeah well we we got on in Cairo and we went to Israel and Greece uh, several islands in Greece and uh, so it was over there yeah yeah but we loved it I just wondered if you had any experience with it or had talked to anyone about it. I haven't. I don't think Dave has. No, either. nor have I. Yeah. But I like that. I highly recommend it. They, you know, that you get you get free wine with every meal. You don't just get it with dinner. And that's the way it is on region. And they have a lot of things, you know, that they offer. Region includes drinks on in, in their fee. Yeah, okay. there's some cruise lines where it's an all inclusive thing, including all the booze. All right, Susan. Thank you. Jim Zim's going to stick around, and give us another segment. He can't go home anyway. <laughs> I can't the get traffic. Out of here. Jan for our grand day has deigned us with a phone call. We'll check in with Jim when we come back. We're live. We're local. You're stuck in traffic. Stick with us. We'll get you home. Six oh seven on the Central Coast. Happy Tuesday. I would be happy if you're safe at home. You do not want to be out on the highway right now. We're not quite sure everything that's been going on today, but it has been a mess all afternoon. Joe and I are here all the way till uh, 7 o'clock. We will do what we can to give you traffic updates. By the way, it is Tuesday, November 26, 2013. I'm Dave Congleton. We've asked uh, Jim Zim, our cruise guy, to st- stick around for another segment. We've been getting a lot of phone calls coming in for Jim. If you want in on the conversation, give us a call, 543-8830, 1-800-549-5832. Jim has been on about 20 cruises, most of them with Carnival. He's here defending Carnival. He <laughs> loves them. I do. He would encourage you to take a Carnival cruise. I've enjoyed every one of them. And I would just say, if you haven't been on a cruise, you really should go. And if nothing else, just do the Ensenada cruise as a start. Because it's affordable. And it's only like three nights. You can make it four if you want. And it will give you a sense as whether or not you would enjoy a longer Cruise, or better yet, do the Cabo San Lucas Puerto Vallarta cruise. That's a really nice cruise to start out on too. Five four three eight eight three zero one eight hundred five four nine five eight three two. Rossi's in San Luis on KVEC. Hi, Rossi. Hi, Dave. How are you? We're good. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Thanks for asking. A uh, question about uh, fishing on some of these cruises. Do they have? Uh, uh, 
like little side tours or trips where you can get off and do other extracurricular activities or absolutely much just yeah it's called a shore excursion and so the classic one for the fishermen would be to take the cruise down to cabo san lucas and go out on a fishing excursion during the day on in cabo and right. you can you know but we need to get some marlin or whatever but we need to point out all these excursions cost extra oh sure right right yeah well the nice so thing where does uh cabo san lucas depart out of you would take a cruise out of Los Angeles, yeah. and you would end up in Cabo San Lucas one day uh, or two days. Some of the cruises go there actually two different days, and also Puerto Vallarta typically. That would be like there's a six-day carnival cruise that goes down there. There's a seven-day carnival cruise that goes down there out of L.A. All right, nice. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, Rossi. Have fun. Here's Jan and Aurora Grande on KVC. Hey, Jan. Hey, Dave. Hey, dear. How many cruises have you been on from Carnival? <laughs> uh None, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't plan to go on yeah, any. I know. However, I have been, my very first cruise was with Princess, yeah, and I enjoyed it very much. Then I made the disastrous mistake of going on one with NCL, and it was a disaster, that's and Nor- I will the- never repeat it. That's Norwegian. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, it was, uh, it may be forgiven because the ship was due to be uh, uh, forever uh, retired. Retired, yes. And so at the end of that cruise, everybody lost their job. So oh. they were somewhat less than enthusiastic. Wow. <laughs> they might have waited till the. So they got back to port before announcing that. You know? uh, yeah, but uh, it was the sort of thing where people came out of the woodwork the last evening uh, of the cruise. People I had never seen before with their hands out. Wow. And then the next morning, uh, like, hello, hello. Uh, coffee, please. Yeah. Orange juice. Yeah. Hello. Is, sorry, there's somebody. been a mutiny. There's been a mutiny. Yeah, a mutiny. <laughs> and uh, so I wasn't sure whether everybody had jumped ship or they were going to throw us overboard. But mm. it, that was it. Was kind of like, okay, NCL, you're toast. What What advice would you give Jan to people thinking about going on a cruise? What would I give? Yeah, uh, I would suggest a a short cruise. And uh, as I said, my first one was on on Princess, which I thought was very enjoyable. And uh, it was in the Caribbean uh, from Miami. Uh, and I don't truly remember how far south we went. I know we uh, went to Puerto Rico. We went to Barbados. Uh, we did a, a nice uh, probably week-and-a-half cruise, and then yeah. we stopped and stayed a week in Puerto Rico. Uh, my father was born there, so I wanted to go see where my daddy was born, where yeah. he lived uh, the early part of his life. But I would and, think a seven-day cruise would be long enough, Jim, for people to decide, oh, yeah, is this for me or not? Yeah. Yeah. And for and people in this so area. That, you're... that was a good beginning, and then it was probably five or six years before I did the next one, and that was the calamity on NCL. Mm. And so then it was several years uh, like several, several years before the next one, which was on Regent to Alaska. And you became uh, official Regent groupie after that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, this is the way to cruise. So what was your favorite cruise of all the ones you've taken? Alaska. Because that's where uh, well, she met me. Alaska <laughs> was a, oh, my goodness, this is a lovely cruise. But the favorite cruise was the world cruise. Oh, how about and Antarctica? Five month cruise. How about Antarctica? Uh, Antarctica. Oh my, yeah, that that's in a class by itself. All right then. Absolutely yeah. a class by itself. I'm sorry. Once you've been to Antarctica, nothing else will do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's it's kind of like oh my God, yeah. how how could anything compare? But it's kind of like going to outer space again. How would anything compare with that? Well said, Jan. Thank you very much for calling in. 543-88-30-1-800-549-5832 for Jim Zim talking about cruising. Mike's in Aurora Grande on KVEC. Hi, Mike. Hey, Dave. How are you? We're good, Mike. Thank you. 
Good. Hey, I've been on three cruises, once to Princess to Alaska, twice with Norwegian Cruise Lines. Never had any issues with any of them. They're both very good cruise lines. But this is advice for Ross. You called it about fishing. Yeah. Save the shore excursion costs. Get off at Cabo San Lucas. And the moment you get off, you'll see all the local fishermen with their pongos. Um, grab one of them. Go out and use a pongo for what it was originally used for, uh, fishing <laughs> instead of drug running. Yeah. And... 200 bucks. The last time I was there, got me a five-hour trip where I got three tuna, a 25-pound dorado, and a 110-pound marlin, um, all released except for the very delicious dorado. Um, and so you say you you don't have to pay the expensive markup fees for the the cruise lines. But that's a that's a great point, Mike. If you get off at any port. There are going to be locals there, and yeah. you can negotiate directly with them. Yeah, and, and Cabo, as an example, don't limit it to fishing. I mean, anything you want to do, you can walk right off of the ship, and right there at the marina in Cabo, there will be, you know, 50 guys who will point you in the right direction. Uh, you know, you tell them what you want to do. I want to go parasailing, or I want to go scuba diving, or whatever, and they will set you up. Anything else you want to say, Mike? Exactly. Well, there's all kinds of other things you could do. We did tequila tasting yep. uh, down in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, we did that. Stopped at a little place called Cheeky Monkey. Uh, my buddy had six of the $1 margaritas. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he was a lightweight. I had seven. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's so much fun you can do on your own uh, without having to do the excursions. That's a v- excellent advice. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You. Oh, yeah, when we did uh, Puerto Vallarta, we went with Pastor Doug, and he got off, and he got us a van. There were like seven of us. And I think it was like thirty bucks total, yeah. And then we threw in tips, yeah. And we had it for the day. It was so dirt cheap, yeah. If but you, if we had done an excursion on the ship, it would have been. Ridiculous. If you need to do it inexpensively, you know that's the way to do it. Now there's some advantages to the ship sponsored shore excursions too. You're never going to get left behind. That's right. You know if you're on a shore excursion that that is sponsored by the ship, and that bus that you're on or the van or whatever breaks down on the way back. Uh, you know, that ship is going to wait until all of the people are back on board who are on shore excursions purchased through the ship. Uh, Tipster Bruce is telling us that Corporate Canyon Road is now officially open. Thanks to that, Bruce. So we actually have one road that's open. Uh, so you're going to go, you're going to go to Alaska and then you're going to do the Caribbean on the super new ship. I, yeah, I've got a couple things in the works. I've actually got three cruises. I've got deposits on my next three cruises. And why do you put deposits down? Uh, to, to snag the you cabin say, that I want. Oh, because that's the as I've cruised so much now, you know, I'm getting particular about what kind of cabin I want. This next, very next cruise that we're going to be on is actually a big splurge. I made a whole bunch of money on the stock market in 2013. Yeah. So I decided one time, we're going to really go all the way. And so we're in the most expensive suite on the ship on our next cruise. Uh, it's called the Captain's Suite. It's right above the bridge. It's gigantic and with a gigantic balcony. You know, we can't afford a cruise like this all the time, but we want to do it one time just to kind of see how fun it would be. What's your dream cruise? What's the one that you really want to do? I've got several, that, you know, that I want to do. Oh, give me the forward. one at the top of your list. I want to do a Panama Canal cruise, but I, I really enjoy the Caribbean cruises, and I can just do those over and over because the Caribbean is so great. Yeah. And are you familiar with a, a ship called The World? It's a residential cruise ship. Uh, I saw, when we were in Ushuaia, Argentina, I saw a, a floating condo. Is that what you're referring what it is. to? That's what it is. It's a floating condo. It goes all over the world, and you know, you you purchase a cabin like a, a you know a condominium, right. and you live on the ship, and it goes all over the place. Yeah. That would be heaven for me. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> but see, after about ten days, I'm ready to get off ship. I have a great time on the ship, yeah. but after ten days, I'm ready to come home. I could ever consider a ship my home. Different anyway. strokes for different folks. So anyway, Jim Zim loves Carnival. And the thing I'll say about Carnival is that they probably have the best deals. So if you're looking for a first-time cruise, although I still would urge people, from my experiences, to try Princess first. Princess has some good things uh, out I, of LA. I shared the email. Right now they've got some incredible deals. Just do that three-nighter to Ensenada and see if you, if you enjoy that. And then you'd be ready for other cruises. Yeah. For people in this area, you know, who are going to cruise out of LA so that they don't have to pay airfare, look into Princess. 
and into Carnival at the options and see what works for you. All right, good job, Jim. Jim Zim, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Happy sailing. Final thoughts? Well, I have a website if you want to see some of the photographs sure. I've taken of cruise ships and stuff like that. The, the address for the website is complicated. The easiest way to find it is just to Google Jim Zim Carnival Cruise, mm. and you'll find me. They really should be paying you something for being their spokesperson. I'm just a happy customer. There you go. All right, Jim, thank you. We'll come back. We'll update you on traffic, and then Joe and I will run some last call right here on News Talk 920 KVEC. All right, Joe, come on in here, please. Joe's been uh, working pretty hard this afternoon. California headline news at the bottom of the hour. I'm Dave Congleton. We've got Charlie calling in now on KVEC. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, how you doing? We're good. What's up? Uh, I'm just going to tell you about a crew that took it. It was pretty close to 20 years ago okay. now, you know. All right. But we... But I can't, I can't remember who the company was, or who, but it was it was the real reasonable. They 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 pick us up at the bus depot. I mean at the train station in San Luis. Yeah. Took us to L.A. and we had a party in L.A. Then we got another train. Took us to New Orleans. And we went down to Mississippi and then out into what Jamaica and all those places, Mexico. Then they took us back to New Orleans. Got another train. Took us all the way back to San Luis Obispo again. Sounds like a cruise line that's probably out of business by now if they if they did all that for you. Wow. Yeah, I know. It wasn't that expensive. And every time we had a place like L.A. or New Orleans, we had parties and carrying on. And uh, it wasn't a great big cruise ship, but it was, yeah, it was great, you know. From the, I wish I could remember who they were. But you haven't done anything since then? That was the last cruise I went on, but I think wow. I'm going on another one. I would think so, but I wouldn't expect the next one to be that fun. No, that was great. I, I I'd think, like to get picked up in San Luis, not have to do a thing. Huh? Yeah, wow, great, love it. If you if you think of the cruise line, call us back and let us know. We'd love to hear it. Thank you, Charlie. Bruno's on KVEC. Hey, Bruno, how you doing, my friend? Hey, okay, congratulations on your wedding. Oh, thank you very much. It's about time you made an honest woman out of her. I wish you made an honest man out of me. <laughs> so you're you know a thing about cruising. Yeah, I, we just finished up our uh, my forty first cruise a couple of weeks ago. Forty first cruise? Wow. Yeah, we've got four more planned. Yeah. The last one we went into the Black Sea, then hit the Greece in Greece and Turkey. It was uh, we were on the ship for uh, twenty four days. Wow. And then um, in the January February time frame, we went to uh, on Celebrity um, uh, Infinity. We went down to Antarctica, uh, up on islands and all. I know you've done that yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, in February, going through the Panama Canal on Island Princess. I've done it before in the Celebrity Infinity also. Do you have a preferred cruise line, Bruno? Celebrity. Okay. Yeah, I've what... done, uh, I completed 16 cruises on Celebrity. Wow. And I've done 10 on Princess, about 8 on Holland America, 3 on Carnival, Two on Royal Caribbean, two on Norwegian, two on Viking, and three on Azamara. I know all about Azamara as well. I've been on both ships. Well, the, the Susan who called in was very high on them. I hadn't heard of them before. Oh, they're very good. They're actually a division of uh, Royal Caribbean. Oh. Um, they start out as part of Celebrity. And uh, the one thing about the Royal Caribbean lines, they have they honor your loyalty cross line. Oh. So if you reach. Uh, uh, like I'm Elite Plus on on uh, um, Celebrity, I get to do what Diamond Plus does uh, or Diamond on um, World Caribbean, and the same with whatever the level is called in as America. So yeah, yeah. you reach a one level at one, and it's honored on another part of it, another line. Uh, the problem with Carnival is you could go 20 cruises on Carnival, you try to even go to uh, Princess, which is much better, then you start at the bottom of the barrel. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Jim has been on like 19 Carnival cruises, and it doesn't sound like they've done much for him. Well, uh, the way it worked with Elite Plus now is on on uh, um, Celebrity is, let's see now, I get uh, uh, two loads of laundry, uh, three per person per cruise. I get, uh, we have cocktail hour every night for two hours, uh, uh, usually with the top observation room, the top, they call it reflection, whatever happens to be in the ship. We get, I have some free uh, pressing, free dry cleaning, 
uh, priority embarkation, priority waiting lists on cruise on, uh, on events, um, special breakfast areas. Uh, so you don't have to go with the uh, yeah mimosas and, and, sh- and champagne included, special coffees included. Bruno, I've got to go to news break. If you can't call back, we'll continue the conversation. This is News Talk 920 KVEC. Dave Congleton, Joe Bowman, stay with us. Uh, welcome back to News Talk 920 KVEC. I'm Dave Congleton. And I'm Joe Bowman. Is it on my backup page? Yeah, it should be. It should be in the okay. little purple yeah. box there. It's okay. It's, here's a promo that Joe. They probably heard it today on the morning news. Yes. Why you want people to remember World War II and what happened to you and your family? Kipling said, if history were taught in the form of stories, it would never be forgotten. How horrible war is for the people fighting in it, but it is equally horrible for the civilians. So please, let's have some peace, peace on earth. Felicia Brown, you're a truly amazing woman. Dave Congleton, weekday afternoons 3 to 7, News Talk 920, KVEC. Good job. That was a great, great story. I'm haunted by that woman. You know. <sighs> Hi, you're on KVEC. Hi, this is Bruno again. Hey, Bruno. Sorry we had yeah. to interrupt you. So, no yeah, we're talking about cruising, and you've been on 41 cruises. Is there any cruise left that you haven't gone on that you really want to go on? Yeah, uh, I've been to Asia a few times. I haven't explored everything. And I have got, had not gone around Africa. And um, I'm going to Iceland uh, in May. Oh. We're taking a cruise from Denmark uh, to Oslo to Denmark to mean to Iceland and back. Um, and then, then we're going to do the road tour of Scotland. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, Scotland's wonderful. Fred and Girl's wonderful. You know, Robin's heritage is Scottish, so she's go up to the lost territory. Hmm. Now, Jim Zim, when he was here, he's one of these guys that prefers to book everything in advance, and he's not going to be looking for the deals. But yet, Bruno, there are deals to be found, are there not? There's extremely good deals. Um, a few weeks ago, we, we took this cruise, you know, from Istanbul to Istanbul, the second part of the cruises. And that was on Celebrity uh and uh, I went concierge class. So I said, I just went balcony on that one. But, uh, no, I'm an awful class, excuse me. That's another description. But uh, they have uh, the, the following cruise was started uh, uh, October 31st, 12 days, Istanbul to Istanbul, that went to Athens, with Ephesus, and Marmaris, and Mykonos, and Santorini, Rhodes, Crete. You know, Athens. Yeah. Um, they went, that went on Celebrity for six ninety nine. Jeez. For 12 days. Jeez. And anybody knows you can't eat for that in Europe. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Uh, so that was, I, uh, I think we paid somewhere around 1200 bucks or $1,300. Um, where one reason why I'm, I've got a place in Florida is because we're only 100 miles at the most, 110 miles at the most from like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, yep. Yep. Canaveral. And um, Jacksonville's about 300, 200 miles away, 220, I guess. And all those places are, are places that the cruise ships leave out of. So, and if you're there at the last minute, you get some fabulous deals. Mm. Uh, I've heard some people say, oh, we got a, a mini suite for 10 days for 299 Jeez. But whatever they have, they want that loaded. Yeah, because um, they, they don't want uh, any empty rooms. One guy who went uh, transatlantic from Barcelona to San Juan, Puerto Rico. I was on the ship with him. He got an ocean view cabin. Uh, this is on the Celebrity Summit. Again, a wonderful ship. Um, and he paid $349 for 14 days. God. And he was part of the elite class, so he had two hours of cocktails every night. He had about four drinks every night, so the cruise was free. Wow. <laughs> so wow. there, there's, there are deals out there. Um, the Celebrity Big Ships, which are the Solstice class, are really, really fabulous. Um, we booked on, on the Eclipse for the fall, and that one uh, is about 122,000 tons, about 2,800 passengers, which is not very many passengers for that tonnage. No, I've been on a, I've been on a Carnival ship that's 70,000 tons with the same number of passengers. You go like on the Fascination, the Elation, and all that. They're old tubs, no balcony cabins. Okay, and this and. Uh, 
like 90% of the solstice ocean view cabins are balcony. And there's like half an acre of grass on the top deck. You could play bocce ball, you know, lawn bowling. You could lay down on the grass. Of course, there's no dogs there to pee on them. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's really a wonderful line. Uh, it's, it's the most value for the money, I, I believe. Do you use travel websites, Bruno, to help you find the deals? I use um, um, primarily Vacations to Go, CrewCon, and Online Vacation Center. Yeah. And I like Online Vacation Center. I'll give them a plug because I, I bought 500 shares of the stock. Yeah. If you do that, yeah. they give you 5% rebate after the cruise. Wow. So if you have a $2,000 cruise per person, two people, you get $200 back in the mail, tax-free. It is. So that's, that's a pretty nice deal. And they've, I just got a check in the mail now for 350 bucks for the uh, two consecutive cruises we had. So that's online, onlinevacationcenter.com. Right. And I talked to Marie White. She's a great agent. And, uh, and the stock symbol is O-N-D-C. Not to be confused with your call letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they, and uh, they do uh, pretty well. Crewcon's having a big sale right now. Um, almost all of them are, and they've got some extra bennies, you know. Um, and one thing also about uh, uh, Princess is also good for Benny Wise. Um, if you have five cruises or fifty days, whatever, I mean, they become platinum. Then on like on a fourteen day cruise, you have two hundred and fifty minutes of internet time they throw in, and you know you have some. Uh, other Denny's, uh, you know, priority this and the priority that. Because they want you coming, no these priority. cruise ships want you coming back. Pardon? They, they want you to come back. Yeah, they want you to come the back. The is very good about that, about uh, uh, sending all kinds of brochures and this event, which the other gentleman mentioned about uh, they're having 100% rebate sale, you know, you or credit sale. You buy, you get on a cruise for out of L.A. for 269 for a four-day cruise, you get 269 credit towards the next cruise. Um you get on their list, and they'll give you a lot of last-minute things. You know, the next week, like they have one that's, I think, uh, on December 9th, uh, twelve days around Tahiti, or ten days around Tahiti, on the Ocean Princess. I was on it when it was called the Tahitian Princess. Same ship, same ships as as American ships, the same ships as three of the um, uh, as, uh, Oceania ships used to belong to Renaissance before they went belly up, and uh, right after 9/11, so. All these romantic places, Bora Bora, Morena, um, Papiete, um, and Riotia, and it's uh, 1099 for for uh, the 10 days around uh, the, those romantic French Polynesian islands. Yeah, wow. Um, we I, we did I did a cruise uh, on Celebrity. Uh, we went to. Um, Honolulu, we flew there at a $149 flight from San Jose to Hawaii. And, uh, we had 13 days on the Celebrity Century. It's their oldest ship, but it was so fun. And, uh, uh, seven days around the island and six days back, a uh, full cruise. And we docked in, uh, Ensenada. They bust us free to San Diego, Lindbergh Airport. And, uh, it was like ten ninety nine a person for a balcony cabin for 13 days. How about the river cruises, Bruno? So people called in and wanted to know if you've ever been on any of the river cruises through Europe. I've been on uh, a Viking River cruise in Europe and also the Viking River cruise in China. What was your experience like with the one in Europe? Uh, Europe was good. Uh, it was good. I mean, you don't have all the food choices and stuff like that. I find that the breakfast, my personal choice is better. The servings are a little smaller than, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the, the big advantage is that they have your day planned. So they have all these excursions already planned for you. You know, you you travel at night. Um, and I did a I did a uh, Nuremberg to um, you just saw it, yeah, Hungary, uh, Budapest. Yeah. And I got there a day early. It happened to be the Blau Knox Festival, the Blue Night Festival, which was great. That was in May, and we just went through the Rhine Danube Canal to the Danube River. We stopped in Vienna. We stopped in Regensburg. Uh, Melt, um, and a few other places ended up in, in, uh, um, Budapest. And, uh, every place we stopped, uh, they'd have a bus waiting for us, or if we stopped in town, they'd have a little walking tour to town. 
take us to the, you know, the old uh, churches when they have uh, organ concerts and, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, different than the big cruises. It had sure. advantages and had disadvantages. Yeah. It probably only about 160 people on that ship. Yeah, but there's something to be said for that. All right, Bruno, I need to let you go. Good to hear from you. Be safe when you travel and have a happy Thanksgiving. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll give you a final wrap-up of what's happening out there with the traffic. This is News Talk 920 KVEC. So Rolling Stone magazine is announcing today that Billy Joel is going to make an historic announcement next week. They're saying what it is. Rolling Stone magazine is saying Billy Joel is going to make an historic announcement next week. Millie Vanilli did all his work. I don't know. I have no idea what it could be. I don't know what there's left to do. I don't know. He was a KGB agent. That's why he was in Russia. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, good job today in traffic. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> Rough day. Yeah. If you want in on this conversation, we need to hear from you now, please. Phone lines are open at 543-8830. 800-549-5832. Any topic. We've been talking about cruising, but we're talking about anything. Yeah. Problem with all these phone calls about cruises. I want to be on a, have you been on a cruise? I have. I want to be on a cruise right now. I do, yes. That'd be great. Um, hi, you're on KVEC. Hi, Dave. Hi, Joe. Hey, hey. Rhett. How you guys doing? Love your uh, Lifestyles with Rich and Famous show today. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was, wasn't uh, it? Kind of. Joe, you've been working too hard. I think you're getting a little punchy. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, it, I just I started the day off on the wrong foot, at least my work day on the wrong foot, because I hit some major traffic coming into L, into slow off LOVR, and I was like, well, what am I in LA here? And Red, uh-huh. if you listen carefully to these segments on cruising, the bottom line is is that anybody can go on a cruise and you can afford it. Well, yeah. I mean, Princess has just the come out; ones, yeah. they come out with their one ninety nine, ten Sonata. It's back. It's, yeah. it's a great cruise. Yeah, I did the carnival thing. I think it was a three-day, four-day to Ensenada, whatever it was. All right, so you've done I, it. I think I had fun, yeah. <laughs> I think I had fun. Well, I went to, uh, there's a couple bars there, Who Songs, and then right across the street is Papa's and Beer, kind of the younger kids, loud music, a lot of dancing. I say yeah. I think I had fun because I came back to the ship wearing a sombrero and a serape. Oh, wow. Hammered. Wow. I'm pretty sure I had a good time. Okay. It's good to know. Yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for sharing. I like the I like the, I like the food. <clears throat> the food is really good, especially the fact that it's free. <clears throat> Very good. Yeah, I remember the last night we were there. I was like, uh, I think I could have an extra lobster tail. They were like, Yeah, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Very cool service. They want you to come back. Yeah, it's fun. All right, you guys. You have a good night. See you. Right. Thank you. We got a Tony and Orchid on KVEC. Hey, Tony. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're great, thank you. What's uh, what's on your agenda for Thanksgiving, you guys? I'm off to Catalina. I'm Yo, you going to Catalina? You do you do that every Thanksgiving, do you? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Go down on Thursday, come back on Saturday. You uh, you uh, bother to barbecue a turkey while you're over there, or what? No, actually, there's a couple of nice restaurants we go to. You order uh, turkey or? Ah, it depends. Uh, they have they have traditional Thanksgiving meal, but you can also get salmon. I don't sure. know. It just depends what they got. What's Joe's plan? What are you doing, Joe? Well, I'm heading down to SoCal. Going to have Thanksgiving with some friends. There you go. Yeah. You guys have a good time. I'm thankful you're still on the air. That's nice. very nice of you to say, Tony. Thank you. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? It's also, it's also, it's also probably a miracle. but. Uh, yeah. uh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Oh, we'll cook at home. Yeah, we got got family. We're we'll entertain. So good for you. Good. All right, you guys. All right, sir. Thank you. Here's Marilyn in San Luis on KVC. Hey, Marilyn. Hello, Dave and Joe. Let's go on a cruise. Let's do it. Uh, Any time, I'll be ready with my passport and everything. Well, have you have you bothered to get your passport? No. All right. Well, can we do that? Yes. Because she was supposed to go with the Cincinnati and she couldn't go. Okay. 
So um, I didn't ha- hear anyone say they ever went on a tanker cruise. Well, you know? That's not a cruise. Well, they called them cruises. The people I know who went on those had a lot of fun. So, hmm. And then I went on a cruise up the Mississippi from New Orleans. That was just five days on one of those. Was it a steamboat? Yes. That was lots of fun. I bet that was expensive, though. No, it wasn't bad at all. Oh. I, it was probably 10, 12 years ago, but no. And they stopped at all these little towns and let you out, and you went around and wandered. And I told my sister, you always go to the city government centers for the bathrooms because they're always clean. <laughs> Why don't you just use the bathrooms on the ship? Well, sometimes you're spending half a day. I see. And we're going up to Watsonville, and there will be 36 people. I'm not jealous in the least of either of those. <laughs> the, 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 the Watsonville part or the fact that you're going to be having dinner with 36 people. <laughs> yeah, isn't I, that I, huge? You know, I'm having dinner with three. Well, they're cooking four turkeys. Thir- are you all related? Uh, no. Uh, extended family of my niece-in-law. And we're staying with my brother, and okay. there are only two there. You know, the oh. odds of some of you getting really sick are pretty high. Really? Well, with that many people in a confined space, one of them, one of you is going to be sick walking in, <laughs> and then spending all that time with each other. You're going to be—I predict, Marilyn, you're going to be sick next week. Well, they live in a rural area and have lots of acreage and a big farmhouse and. Everything, so I don't expect to get sick, but I'll let you know when I get back. Okay, well, at least we'll have her listening. And you have a great time on your trip over to Catalina, as you always do. I always do, thank you. Yes. Rain or shine, we love Catalina. I know. Look forward to that trip again soon, too. Thank you, dear. Well, we can all go together. Yeah, that would be great. All right, we're making it happen. All right. All right, dear, we'll talk tomorrow. Thank you. Final thoughts, Mr. Bowman. Stay safe out there, folks. Roads are clear. Roads are clear, but still stay stay safe. Yeah, because it could uh, happen again anytime. That's right. All right. uh, Thanks to Teresa Slobodnik and Steve Weiss and Jen Zim and everybody who called in during last call. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Thank you for listening. I'm Dave Congleton. Now, Una, Einer, Toby, Daisy Jane, Little Gus, and Big Gus. Get off the couch. Get out the leashes. I'm coming home. Oh,